in this video we'll be discussing about VEGF that's vascular endothelial growth factor also known as vascular permeability factor it is a signaling molecule involved primarily in angiogenesis and vasculogenesis the VEGF is a subfamily of PDGF family which in turn is from a cysteine knot growth factors if we see the structure of VEGF protein it is a homodimer glycoprotein with two RBD domains and two HBD domains. The RBD is a receptor binding domain which binds with their respective receptors, whereas the HBD is the heparin binding domain which mediates co-receptor interaction like with the NRP1 in case of VEGF-A protein. We know these are signaling proteins involved in angiogenesis, vasculogenesis and there are some physiological functions in which VEGF directly or indirectly is involved like bone formation, hematopiosis and wound healing and there are some other functions also. Now first of all let's get to the classification of these factors. In mammals we have 5 classes of VEGF, VEGF A, VEGF B, VEGF C, VEGF D and PGF. Let's discuss the VEGF-A. The gene for VEGF-A is found on chromosome number 6 at 6p21.3 location. The receptors for VEGF-A ligand are VEGF-R1 and VEGF-R2. But this R2 receptor mediates all the functions. The VEGF-A protein also upregulates the nitric oxide production. It mediates the angiogenesis where it increases the migration of endothelial cells. It increases the mitosis of endothelial cells, it increases the activity of matrix metalloproteinases and also it increases the alpha V beta integrin activity. Furthermore, we see this VEGF-A is also involved in diseases like AMD, age-related macular degeneration, where we see the retina secretes extra abnormal volumes of VEGF-A, which causes growth and leakage of VEGF-A factor into the blood vessels. Second one is the proliferative diabetic retinopathy and third one is diabetic macular edema. Then we have VEGF-B protein whose gene is present on chromosome number 6 in humans. The receptor for VEGF-B is VEGF-R1. It plays role in maintenance of newly formed blood vessels during pathological conditions. It also creates new blood vessels during embryonic development. We also see VEGF-B promotes fatty acid uptake in endothelial cells and it also protects neurons in cerebral cortex and retina during stroke. Then third one is VEGF-C. The gene for VEGF-C is present on chromosome number 4 at 4Q34 position. It's received by receptors like VEGF-R2 and VEGF-R3 receptor. First of all, it regulates lymph angiogenesis where it creates new lymph vessels. This factor is important for neural development and blood pressure regulations. Now we see here it has been shown that the receptor mutation of VEGF-R3 protein leads to lymphedema. An increase in VEGF-C promotes cervical cancer metastasis by activation of FAK protein via FLT4 SRC pathway. Then fourth factor is VEGF-D whose gene is present on X chromosome. The receptor for VEGF-D ligand are VEGF-R2 and VEGF-R3. And if we see some important functions of VEGF-D protein, it includes the development of lymphatic vasculature surrounding lung bronchioles. And when we talk about diseases, the VEGF-D serum levels are significantly elevated in angiosarcoma patients. And finally, we have the last factor that is PGF. Its gene is present on chromosome number 14. It's expressed in human umbilical vein endothelial cells and in placenta. It mediates angiogenesis like all other factors do. And it plays role in trophoblast growth and differentiation. And we see this protein that's PGF is also involved in some diseases like placental insufficiency and twin to twin transfusion syndrome. So this is the brief outlook of VEGF proteins and their functions. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting me work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.